Hey everybody, on today's Two on Your Side Town Hall, an inauguration day like no other in American history with fist bumps instead of handshakes and flags replacing spectators on the National Mall. Tonight, after a historic day, the Biden administration getting to work, what it means for Western New York. Plus, Kamala Harris is accomplishing a lot of firsts today, including becoming the first graduate from a historically black university to rise to her position. Some local grads explain why that is so significant. And just four days out from the AFC championship game, the question remains, what's up with Patrick Mahomes? If he does play, how do the Bills stop him? A live discussion about that and a whole lot more coming up. And we thank you for being here on this Wednesday evening. First up, a new administration taking over in Washington at one of the most unsteady moments in recent memory. Right now, the country is deeply divided, still struggling from the deadly coronavirus, reeling from economic hardship, and trying to reckon with racial injustices. But today, President Biden insisted that democracy has prevailed, and he gave his inaugural address at the Capitol just two weeks after it was attacked by that violent mob. The 46th president called for Americans to unite to end the, quote, uncivil war that has fractured the nation. And it all sounds good, but is any of that possible? Here to talk about that is Dr. Peter Yacobucci, political science professor at Buffalo State College and a friend of the show. Professor, you said it during the commercial break there. It was a historic day. It always is every four years on this day. We thank you for your time. Um, pleasure to be here. And this inauguration is certainly different. That's an understatement. And it comes after a really combative election that divided America like we've never seen, an insurrection at the Capitol two weeks ago that exposed those divisions even more. And it comes amid a raging pandemic that our country just can't seem to get a handle on. So today, the president vowed to unite the country, as we just talked about. Let's listen for a moment to some of his inaugural address. Politics doesn't have to be a raging fire destroying everything in his path. Every disagreement doesn't have to be a cause for total war. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. And he kind of said to give him a chance, but uniting America right now, healing the divisions of the last four years, People can't even agree to disagree on Facebook, so it leaves a lot of people wondering. And so we will ask you, is it even possible? I think it is. I think uh, I, I thought Biden's speech today hit the tone exactly right. His campaign was based on unity, but it's not just unity for unity's sake. It's unity because without unity, we can't solve the problems that are facing our country, whether it's solving and getting us out of the pandemic whether it's reducing economic inequality, racial tensions within the United States, it requires unity. And I think Biden's speech, as his campaign did, hit on that theme. President Biden is getting to work already, signing some executive actions. And if you break it down, Professor, we're looking at now on the screen, President Clinton signed 254 executive orders in his two terms. For former President George W. Bush, it was 291, 276 uh, for former President Barack Obama. Meanwhile, remember, President Trump served just one term, half the time of those others, yet he signed 211 executive orders. Now, Democrats would prefer a lot of those be undone. We know that uh, just within the last few minutes, President Biden signed some executive orders. We believe he's going to do 17 total today alone. Um, between those and what is to come, both with Congress or just through his executive powers, what do you think is going to be the biggest impact on Western New Yorkers watching right now in terms of what happens in the White House that changes their day to day lives? I think two things. I think it's getting control of the pandemic. I mean, we're in the middle of a raging pandemic where thousands of people across the country are dying every single day. Um, and the, while the vaccine was produced very quickly under President Trump, its rollout and people getting vaccinated has slowed and is not at the pace it needs to be for us to get quickly out of the pandemic. On the other side, and of course related to that, is getting the economy back going. Um, and Joe Biden, part of his initial push to Congress is going to be an almost $2 trillion stimulus plan to get money in people's pockets so they go out and get the economy back moving again and begin to start opening many of the small businesses that we know in our community that have closed. 
I want to dig a little deeper into what you said about the pandemic, because one of those executive actions will be to make changes to the U.S. response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's worth noting that this is happening a year ago to the day the first coronavirus case was identified here in the United States. So now as the numbers go up, many Western New Yorkers are struggling to sign up to get vaccinated. We hear from them every day. This has been extremely frustrating for a lot of people. What changes do you anticipate President Biden will make and how quickly might we actually notice them? Well, I think you're going to see two changes. One, I think you're going to see a federalization of the vaccination effort. The way it was run under Trump was that states were left to their own devices to set up vaccination clinics and get vaccinations done. And because of the pandemic and what it has done to the economy, states simply don't have the money or resources to do it. The federal government does. And so I think he's going to put the full force of the federal government behind that. The other part is we simply didn't buy enough vaccines through the summer um, from the private companies that were developing them developing them. And I think you're going to see the Biden administration accelerate that as well. President Trump earlier today said that he wished the new administration great success, um, but he suggested that he does not plan to remain on the political sidelines. I think today, you know, we, we saw former President Barack Obama, who is out there. He's done interviews, written books. And then we also saw former President George W. Bush, who really went to his ranch and, and does some painting and has really kind of gone, uh, you know, out of the spotlight. Um, what do you think we're going to see from our 45th president? I think President Trump wants to stay engaged, but I think it's going to be very difficult for him to stay engaged. I think that's for two reasons. One, he's going to be under a significant legal and financial problem. He owes a tremendous amount of money. He and his organizations, close to a half a billion dollars that come due over the next couple of years that he's going to have to figure out how to get out of. And as we know, especially led by New York State, he's going to be under possibly legal indictment as well. Um, he wants to stay involved, whether he's going to be able to stay involved. Now that he's out of power, will people still listen to him? We'll have to see. We have been chatting with Dr. Peter Iacobucci, pol political science professor at Buffalo State College. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Enjoy the evening, everybody. You too. Thanks very much. Our Verify team has gotten a lot of questions about this inauguration and the new administration, and the most common of which is, now what? In other words, what should we expect from this president here on his first day into his first week and then beyond that? Uh, what is he able to get done quickly? And Verify's Evan Kozlov shows us what is possible right away without the help of Congress. Our sources for this are a trio of political science experts. Gary Nordlinger from the George Washington University, Hans Noel from Georgetown University, and Dr. Ravi Perry from Howard University. Let's start with the big one, executive orders. Well, there is a ton you can do with executive orders. Well, there are certain things that, you know, he can change uh, on day one, hour one, minute one. Our experts explain that Biden should be able to issue a laundry list of executive orders right away. And while there's no official word from Biden about what those orders will be, the AP reports that Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, outlined several in a memo to staff, all expected in the first 10 days. They include rejoining the Paris Climate Accord, reversing the travel ban from several majority Muslim countries, and issuing a mask mandate on federal property and interstate travel. In part because of polarization and because of divided government over the last you know, several decades, you know, presidents have gotten really good at using executive orders, signing statements and the like to to adapt. Next up, let's talk about appointees. Biden has the task of filling a massive bureaucracy. The president has 4,000 people to appoint to federal office. The fact that the tone of the office changes. It doesn't require writing whole new laws. You just need someone else who's in charge who says, we're going to prioritize this and not that. Lastly, let's talk about one more thing. The power to uh, persuade. Power to persuade. Power to persuade. All three experts use those same three words to explain that essentially, when the president speaks, people listen. That allows them to set the agenda on Capitol Hill and perhaps change public opinion nationwide. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozlov. The power to persuade. Hey, if there's something you'd like us to look into, you can reach out to our Verify team on social media. The email address is verify at wgrz.com. We would also like to persuade you to text us at 716-849-2200. <laughs> and of course, stay tuned for more of the town hall.